Thank you so much, uh, uh, Elia and Deb, for your presentation, and Jim as well. Um, we invite our participants on the webinar to share their questions in the chat pod. Uh, while we're uh, looking for some of your questions, um, we'll take some that our registrants posed in their registration. And um, maybe you could talk about this a little bit more, uh, uh, Jim, what strategies or policies have proven successful in teacher retention, both at state and local levels? Well, um, so as a researcher, I, I, uh, there's an issue with the word proven. Um, it's, it's hard to prove something, but I will tell you um, some of the things that have been shown to be related to retention. Um, and these are often cited in the, in the research literature. Um, one of the most frequently cited factors is uh, the school culture or working conditions. Um, so things such as uh, school safety, uh, a clean environment, and uh, including teachers in decision making, um, those have been uh, shown to be related to teacher retention. Also uh, fostering collaborative relationships in schools, that's also related to retention. Um, and finally, uh, providing teachers, especially new teachers, with, with support. Um, there have been studies on mentoring and induction programs, and, and uh, depending on the program, those have been shown to be uh, related to uh, teacher retention. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I did have a question that focused specifically on Title I schools. Um, Elia and Deb, would you have any comment to make about how can, what can districts do to retain good teachers in Title I schools? Well, you know, in Minnesota, we do have a, what, um, what we, we have a regional centers of excellence. So we have six across the whole state of Minnesota, which I call the like um, mini MDEs, Department of Education. And in there, we have a staff that are supporting our priority and focus schools. So most of our priority schools are our Title I schools. So then the support with funding and plus with the expertise that we have of the staff, to, uh, to go into the schools and support our Title I schools, we have in the retention then of, uh, of our teachers. And we have from English, our specialists include special education, English learners, math, uh, reading, uh, family engagement. So all those specialists go into those schools and the regions so that we don't have to always depend on, uh, on our offices here at, at the, you know, in Minneapolis. Okay, thank you. So your centers of excellence provide the extra support. Yes. Uh, Dr. Miller, did you have anything to add for Oklahoma about what districts can do to retain good teachers in Title I schools? Uh, yes, uh, I, I would offer up that, uh, you know, one thing that we're doing in our agency is a lot of cross-functional teaming. And so educator effectiveness teaming with school improvement office. And so where those Title I designated schools, uh, are, you know, they're already working in those schools. So we are um, partnering with them uh, in helping conduct needs assessments. And when, when in fact, maybe a needs assessment would reveal a human capital issue, uh, we're able to um, help that district connect funds to focus on recruitment and on retention and, and a lot of what Jim has already mentioned you know the time uh, professional time allowed uh, for educators PLCs for example um, the uh, e even something as simple as interview protocol within a specific district um, in recruiting and um, uh, interfacing with these potential hires. Okay, thank you for that. I was recently uh, visiting with a superintendent 
in Ohio, and uh, in their interview process, they used to do the team interview with um, a number of staff in the school, and then they had uh, the teacher candidate teach a lesson. But some of the teacher candidates didn't make it through the team interview because they're, and they realized they were losing some good candidates. So they switched it around and did the teaching of the lesson first. And then they identified that that was going to be a good teacher. And then they did the team interview with the school. So they switched it around because they realized they lost some good candidates. And another thing he learned is that in the debrief, some of the candidates uh, being interviewed said when they walked into the school if it smelled clean and uh, Jim brought up a clean environment and you know we use all of our senses and um, so I thought that was quite interesting that he shared a, a couple of those strategies that he was being mindful of when he interviewed new teacher candidates for his district. Um, Another question we had in the pre-registra in the registration was the teacher shortage again, um, and teachers moving to higher paying districts within the state. How has that affected your state with teachers moving to higher paying districts within your state? Um, Robin, do you want to start this time, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, well, we have. Um, a minimum salary schedule and of course districts may choose to pay beyond that scale and so that already um, creates a bit of a competitive climate um, and and also on top of that in Oklahoma we have not had a, a teacher pay raise for right at 10 years um, but what we see is really even the non monetary support uh, where teachers might leave um, a district uh, to go to another Oklahoma district, and it's because they are enticed by uh, some of the things we just talked about as far as retention, professional um, um, collaborative time uh, with their colleagues, um, uh, even a, a building principal or leadership that they feel is very strong. Um, so, you know, I think some of those non monetary supports are. Uh, something to look at, uh, be, you know, beyond teacher pay, certainly teacher salary and compensation is, is um, worthy. Okay, thank you. Um, Elia or Deb, do you have anything to add about um, teachers moving to higher paying districts uh, within Minnesota? You know, it's very similar to what we see from Oklahoma. In, in Minnesota, uh, districts have local control in regards to their salary schedule, so uh, districts can offer bonuses, but it's very similar to what Oklahoma has. Mm 